Welcome to Electra Online. So now let's talk about the subframes, kind of in a general way, but to give you a good idea what's contained within the subframes. So remember that we have a transmission from every satellite of 25 frames, from 1 to 2, all the way to 25, to get the entire message across. Now that is split into two areas. One is where we have subframes 4 and 5 that require 25 total messages before the entire piece of information is sent from satellites to the receiver, where the first three subframes, they're repeated every single 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds, essentially, you get the same information. So why is that? Well, in subframe one, we have what we call the clock offset data, this, which allows us to sync the GPS uh, time to the UTC time, that's the universal time. And it has some coefficients to be able to do some curve fitting. It has the satellite health, and it also contains the weak number. And again, we're going to show you in more detail what, what is contained within each of the subframes. But this is the information that's generally in subframe one. In subframe two, we have the satellite ephemeris. This is very precise information as where exactly the satellite is. Now, of course, that's always changing. So this data is only valid for about one to two hours. And also, it gives you a time specific when the data is exact for that moment in time. And of course, leading up to that moment in time and then leaving that moment in time, the data slowly going to uh, is going to differ from where the satellite actually is. But then we have what we call these uh, coefficients that allows us to do some curve fitting that enables us to use the ephemeris data good for about one to two hours depending upon where in the orbit the satellite is. In some parts of the orbit it doesn't change a lot. In other parts of orbit it changes more quickly so that means that the data is only valid for an hour instead of two hours. And so every one to two hours we switch to a new set of ephemeris data, which again is, is uh, centered on a specific time when it's extremely accurate, along with coefficients to allow us to do curve fitting for that about one to two hour period to know exactly where those satellites are. So that's what the ephemeris data is, and each satellite sends its own ephemeris data. Now, in Almanac, in, uh, in subframe 4 and 5, we have what we call the Almanac data. The Almanac data is the general information about where each of the satellites in the constellation is at. Now, that's not as accurate as the ephemeris data, but good enough for us to figure out pretty well where the satellite is so that the receiver can zero in on the general location. And then once we get the satellite transmission from the satellite, then we can go ahead and use ephemeris data to really zero in on the exact location of the satellite. Notice that in subframe 5, it has the LMAC data for the SVs from 1 through 24. And, and in uh, subframe 4, we have the SV information, the LMAC information from satellites 25 to 32. Here we also have what we call the correction table, which is called the navigation message correction table that allows us to, again, adjust for the time differentiation. It also contains UTC, uh, the universal time, uh, ionospheric data, and also the AS flags. AS stands for anti-spoof, so whether or not uh, satellite is spoofed or not. This data stays good for about 24 hours, so this gets repeated for 12 and a half minutes for a period of 24 hours, after which new data is loaded into the satellite from the ground station, and then the satellite begins to transmit the new data every 24 hours gets renewed. We we'll notice that here we have uh, data that needs to be repeated every 30 seconds, but that only says good for one to two hours. Then we go to a new set of data. So a whole, of, a whole bunch of these sets is loaded in advance so that it can be placed in the transmission line. So whenever we're ready, to, whenever the satellite is ready to give us the accurate location where it's located at, the ephemeris data, then it sends that new information. Again, time centered on a specific point with coefficients so we can curve fit and find the most accurate location of the satellite possible to zero in on the transmission of the satellites. So that's how the subframes are laid out. And now we're going to go on and dig, the, dig a little bit deeper on the content of each of the subframes. So stay tuned and we'll show you how that's done as well.